On this episode of Paint Society, we're gonna remove 15 years of oxidation in just minutes using your basic hand tools. Let's power up and get this started as we learn tricks of the trade on how to remove all the oxidation from your headlights and then seal it in with a UV protection clear coat out of a can. Can these headlights possibly clear up before our eyes and be restored to OEM quality? Let's find out right now. What's going on everyone and welcome back to another episode of Paint Society, the channel where the learning doesn't stop when the video ends. Coming to you from the home garage, I always feel a special connection to my DIY guys sitting in the garage wanting some projects that they can do with just basic tools. Well, we have the project for you today. So the project today is to clear up these foggy old headlights in our own home garage using a variety of basic tools that you can get online or at your local store. So Eagle Abrasives has a job pack and it comes in three grits and this is the K grit. Now we learned about the K grit that it can do all the work that the P grit can do in half the time. And I like it because it comes with its own hand pad and three grits that will work to clear up the headlights nice and easy before we go ahead and clear coat. So your next question is, Brian, why can't I just go ahead and buff the lights? While you can do that, the problem is buffing is not protecting. All it's really doing is making it look good. It's kind of like a band-aid, right? So what we're doing in this episode on this project is we're sanding off all of that oxidation, getting rid of all of it, then we're putting a clear coat on. Now the same type of clear coat that will come out of a paint gun but in a can. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna ensure that the lights are UV protect, protected so they don't fade for a good amount of time. And then we have our clear coat from Eastwood. Now I know you guys love these clear coats because they're two part, they're 2K. This is not the common aerosol clear coat, okay? It actually has two parts where it releases the catalyst into the actual spray paint and from there it's a ticking time bomb of around one to two days before it starts to kick. Now the good thing about this is it has a UV resistance that you would not get from a regular rattle can and we don't need an air compressor to spray it. So next up, I wanna talk about safety first before we move any further. You wanna make sure you're wearing your gloves and I really mean this. Also your respirator, okay? It's very important that you're not breathing in any of the harmful isocyanates that are in this can. This is a 2K product, so it does have those isocyanates in them and they are very, very harmful uh, when you breathe them in. So make sure you guys are taking care of yourself and make sure you're wearing a uh, paint suit as well. So we have a variety of cleaners right here and we'll talk about how we're gonna use them. Now you don't need all three, but I do like to use a degreaser to start off the job just to make sure all contaminants are off so it doesn't clog up my sandpaper. Then along the way in between uh, sanding, we can use some glass cleaner. This will help pull off all, that contam all those contaminants from the surface so you have a nice clean uh, job in the end. And to pull them off, we'll use a microfiber towel. Guys, you know I like microfiber because it does not get soggy and it kind of pulls um, the contaminants off a lot better. And last but not least, we have our tape. Now you don't need both sizes, but if you do, it's gonna help you out. We have three quarters and then we have inch and a half. If you're gonna get one, I suggest three quarters because it's easier to get in between the headlight and the panel, okay? Now, uh, I have this on the tape thing that just makes things a lot easier, but you don't need it. But if you're a painter, you know how good these units are. And last but not least, we have the plastic for covering the car. Now you can simply go ahead to Walmart or Home Depot and just get the pack of the uh, drop cloth plastic. That will work fine. But if you do plan on doing um, painting in your garage or painting in general, uh, this automotive plastic actually has uh, a side that's treated. You can see it says paint this side or this side up. That means that this side of the plastic is treated to actually hold the overspray. So overspray will stick to it, right? Rather than flaking on if you have time in between the jobs. So a good tip, I know that's a big question amongst a lot of my viewers. So let's go ahead and let's get started on the car. So let's go ahead and first talk about the reason why it's oxidizing and what we can expect as a result of clearing these up. Now, if we take a look at the headlight right here, we can see that the clear layer of um, UV protection from the factory is very thin 
and it doesn't last very long and it's been peeling and peeling. It's very important that we remove all the UV protection that the factory has put on and we take it down to bare plastic. And to do that, we really need to hit it hard. Now, if you take a look in this area, we can see minor, minor, minor cracks. Now, some of these cracks will not go away. They're within the plastic, but it will look a lot better. Now, the first thing we need to do is tape it up. Once again, what I like about the tape thing is it sticks to the car. Now I'll go around with my inch and a half just to make sure that I don't go ahead and sand onto the bumper. Now we're not taking the headlights out because we want to do the easiest job possible. Sometimes it's hard for us to learn how to take out a bumper. We don't want to break anything. And if we have a decent enough gap around here, then it's not going to be a problem to run some tape. Now we'll go ahead and use our super clean foaming degreaser. And this is going to help remove any of the contaminants so our sandpaper doesn't clog. We'll let it sit for a few moments. So just for a few moments, you can see all of that yellow coming off already. The headlight is already looking 10 times better. Do I even need to continue doing this project? Yes, of course, because I need to make sure that I am uh, clear coating and getting all the oxidation completely off. So let's go ahead and move on. So we have our kit here. Now let's talk about where we start. Now there's a total of four sheets he's cut in half. We break them in half. We can stick them right onto our hand pad. Now this is K600. This is equivalent to P320. I told you guys how important the first step is. We need to remove all this oxidation because the higher grits are just refining it. They will not remove it. We need to refine this scratch in coming steps. That way the clear can fall into tinier scratches and not coarse ones. That way it's nice and clear. So there's not much to it other than just a little bit of labor. And you'll be able to see that our yellow is coming right off. Now don't be scared. It's going to get worse. It's going to look a lot worse before it looks better. Now in between coats to see what's going on, we'll use some of that spray away glass cleaner. Now we can see here a line of the old UV that's still there. The whole top has lost it, but we need to make sure this line is removed, okay? So to remove this line, this whole area right here still has the UV protection because the top of the headlight is where the sun really focuses on it and breaks it down. If we do not remove all this clear coat, in this area, you will see this line when you go to spray it. So you need to take the time now and you really need to remove everything that you see because it will still be there later on. Almost gone. You can see how it's still shiny right in this area. Don't stop sanding, you're almost there. we'll go ahead and clean off once more and we want to make sure we're using the glass cleaner because it's less abrasive in between coats okay okay so we got all of that outer factory UV uh, coating off now you might ask why can't I just use a MAC lacquer thinner or a mineral spirits well what that's gonna do is it's gonna eat out the plastic we don't want to do that take your time and two sheets of that K600 will take it off and I've got to say it's already leaving it in a better state than a pea grit would. I have already can see it's got a shine to it a little bit, which is a great, great um, sign that these are going to clear up really nice. So once your K600 is done, we'll go ahead and jump to the K800. Now this is equivalent to a P500. So two easy steps and we're ready to clear. And this is just refining at this point. There should not be any more oxidation on the headlight. If you still see some, you need to go ahead and clear it up in the K600 grit, not the K800. Once that K800 is all sanded, then we'll go ahead and wipe them clean. Now, just for reference, I use two sheets of my K600 and one sheet of my K800. Um, primarily because the K600 is doing most of the work 
and uh, eating up all of that oxidation. K800 is just refining it. Now from here, this one is good. I'll go ahead and pull off my tape. I don't want any contaminants in front of tape, dust getting onto the headlight when I go to spray it. And I'll go ahead to the other side and get that one done real quick. So we're gonna go ahead and jump back to this side. Now we're gonna go ahead and tape up the headlight. Now I'm using an inch and a half because I feel like the gaps are a little bit bigger and easier to use inch and a half on this particular vehicle. But remember, all cars are a little bit different. Now I'll put all the product links in the description so you can pick up the tape just like this or the plastic or any products that you see today get the job done. A pocket screwdriver really helps to get that tape into all those crevices. Now that we've bordered out our headlights, let's get our plastic and pull it over the car. Verify that paint this side is facing upwards. That way the overspray sticks to it. Then go ahead and take your tape and overlap the plastic to the original tape that you had. And once it's all masked up, it should look something like this. Now, since the hood really overlaps the headlight, we needed to prop it up. So I used a stick to prop it up in the meantime so it doesn't shut while we're spraying. Now, it might not be the prettiest tape job, but it makes sure that no overspray will get onto the car or get into the engine bay. Now, to ensure that your plastic is not going to go anywhere, go ahead and tape it up. Here's how we tape it up in the back. Just take a whole plastic together and put a piece of tape around it. So we are ready for our clear coat. Let me show you how this can works. It's not like any other aerosol. Remember, it's got the catalyst built into it. So this is the same type of paint that comes out of a spray gun put into an aerosol. Take the cap off, remove the red cap from the top cap. Then we're gonna go ahead and affix it to the stem. Now you have to give it a good amount of pressure. You're gonna hear a pop. Once you hear that pop, we have now broken the bladder inside of the can. And now what's happening is we can release that catalyst into the rest of the clear coat by shaking it. We'll shake it up for two to three minutes and it's good to go. Now it's good to go. But before that, remember our paint suit and our respirator are very important. Now once more, right before we go to spray our clear coat, we'll go ahead and we'll get a final cleaning. Now I'm using a different microfiber, not the same that we used in the beginning. We're now ready to clear. Now you might ask, why are we skipping the adhesion promoter? Well, I don't like using the adhesion promoter on headlights because it really etches into the plastic and I've used it before and it's been bad news. It will etch and almost melt the plastic and you need to sand it all the way starting back with the K600 once again and we're not getting ourselves into that. We have a K800 grit scratch on here and that's more than enough for our clear coat to stick. All we'll do is run a tack rag over the surface and then we're ready to spray. Our first coat will be very, very light. Now you'll notice that it looks foggy. Don't worry, that will clear up. That is just a characteristic of using an aerosol can. So don't go crazy, allow it to clear up in just a few moments. Now we just sprayed our passenger side and in real time, if we jump back to our driver's side, we can see it's already starting to look really clear. Let's leave it for about a good five to six minutes. So it's been five to six minutes. Now what's happening on that first coat? Now that first coat is tacking up 
and it's becoming glue. So the second coat, we can go a little bit wetter, but not too wet. Now that looks pretty foggy. Let's hit time lapse and let's watch it clear up. So the headlight, once it's cleared, has dried an additional two hours and we're ready to remove the tape. There's no reason to take off the tape right away. We'll go ahead and do that now. And there we have it, a beautiful headlight that's been restored in our home garage using a rattle can. And now I know your next question is, can we buff it if we need to? Well, the good thing is I left a little area here, just a touch orange peely. That way I can demonstrate the buffing process using the K1200 grit and polish. But first, let's allow this to dry a good 12 hours before we sand and buff it. So we allowed the headlights to dry overnight, approximately 12 plus hours, and they're ready to get sanded and buffed. So do you really need to sand and buff your headlights? Well, let's first clear up something. Sanding and wet sanding are the same thing. The only difference is you would use water as a lubricant. Now, this is a very good sandpaper, so it doesn't need water. It will cut by itself. And I prefer dry sanding because you can see what you're doing. Now, in the case of these headlights, really, they look fine. But for the video, we'll go ahead and sand a small area just to show you guys how you can buff your headlight in case yours came out a little bit orange peely. So this is the K1200. Now, the K1200 is still a touch aggressive, so we're not gonna really rub it in hard. We're gonna allow the sandpaper to do the work for us. In this area right here, we have a little bit of orange peel, which will be more evident once we sand it. Once I pan over this area, you can see that the Texture is a little bit orange peely. It's really not that bad. What our focus is, we want to remove that orange peel, so we'll keep on doing this until it is smooth and consistent like the rest of the headlight. Now, we don't need to do this to the whole headlight. If we want to, we can, but only to the areas that need it. We can see that the clear coat does powder up nicely and a good indication that this clear coat really builds up mills and gives you a good UV resistance. We'll go ahead and wipe it down. And just like that, we're ready to go ahead and buff. It's really that easy. So I have this Polex Polish 2-in-1 from Ego Abrasives. And the reason why I like it is because it's a polishing compound. It does the job of two in one bottle. So here's when doing the job by hand just kind of stops. We don't have enough friction within our hand to create that shine and bring back that shine because our hand just cannot spin fast enough. So when we go to uh, buff it with the towel, it's still going to be dull. As you can see, it's still dull here. You will need the added assistance of a buffer. I have a mini buffer that I love from Milwaukee, and we have a medium coarse buffing pad on there to go ahead and bring that shine up. This pad with the actual movement and friction created by this buffer will create heat to bring back up that shine. And just a few moments later, the shine is completely restored. So the only downside to have a beautifully restored headlight is you get to see what's settled in your headlights for 10 to 15 years. In this case, we have a little spider and some other insects. But usually you can take some air from the back through one of the holes, whether it's the high beam or the low beam, and you can move it around. And actually, it'll go somewhere else as you don't see it. That's a little bit uh, less desirable and not in the front of the headlight. And there you have it, our project is complete. Now, if you're wondering how long the work time was, it's approximately about two hours. 
Now let's talk about how long these headlights should last. If you've done the work well, they should last a lifetime. If you have not done, if you refined them too much or didn't get enough of the debris off in a lower grit, you might not get as long because that paint does not adhere properly to the actual headlight. This coating on this headlight is 100 times better than the coating that it came with from the factory. So I hope that you learned something and I would love to see your projects. Guys, if you want to support the channel, you can go ahead and pick yourself up Paint Society shirt. Rumor has it, when you wear this shirt that's been touched by yours truly when it's packed, the powers translate from my hands to yours through the paint gun. Until then, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint. Let's check out some before and afters.